So Mary, it is a lovely Sunday morning. The sun is shining and the sky is a brilliant blue, Nancy. I don't think there's a single cloud out there. And we are here. This is another History Files. And we went on the road. It's kind of a special one. We came down here to the Tremplo National Wildlife Refuge down here in Tremplo. And this is the perfect time of the year to take a drive down to the refuge, is it, it is. not? And it doesn't cost anything. You can come here for free. So, oh, I think that's a pretty good deal. And I, I found a little bit about its uh, history. And right now, this refuge is 6,000 acres plus. That's wow. Quite that's, a bit. That's quite a bit of ground. Yes. But it was um, purchased uh, at first, the first time it was purchased for a refuge was in 1936, and that was part of uh, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt, part of his New Deal, apparently. They purchased 700 acres, and they wanted more. They wanted to get more, but just directly to the west of us here, there was an outfit called the Delta Fish and Fur Farm, and they owned quite a bit of uh, land that would make a perfect tie-in to this refuge. Well, now Delta, f Delta fish what? Fur. Delta fish? fish and fur fish farm. And fur farm. Yes. So was it like an actual farm? Well, it was purchased in the early 1900s. This bottom land here, more or less backwater, by a company. Uh, that thought that they were going to drain it oh. and sell it as farmland. In fact, they were going to divert the Tremplo River so that it went into uh, the Pine Creek River. Oh, wow. They had, yeah. And that was back, I guess, when you could just do that kind of stuff. No rules. Yeah, and if they would have done that, I think that it would have totally changed the ecology down here, and Tremplo Mountain would probably not have been there anymore. Wow. And they were going to do this big drainage project. However, it didn't work. And I shouldn't say however. I should say, thank goodness, it didn't work. Well, why didn't it work? Um, well, they really didn't know what they were <laughs> doing, I guess. They are trying to drain how many acres of wetland? Of backwater, yeah. Backwater I mean, protection if zone. If you drain all that... Then where does the water go when you have a flood? Well, and see, that is one of the things I think we're learning, unfortunately and very painfully. Um, as our weather seems to have gotten pretty wonky, and there's a lot of flooding going on. And it's it's got to have a place to go. Flooding is, is nothing new either. No, At no. least not down here. You know, the Mississippi is a big river. And when you look at the drainage area for the Mississippi, it's huge. It's millions of acres. <laughs> you know? There's a few gallons of water that yes, come there cruising down. Are. It is, it is, it's huge. It's a huge drainage area. That's a lot of water. So what happened was eventually um, the the fish the fish and fur farm they did uh, sell some acreage. And they sold it to uh, the Dairyland Power Company. Oh, okay. But then they maneuvered a swap. They swapped the what the acreage that they the fish and fur farm had tried to drain uh, for another piece of land in the Upper Mississippi River National Wildlife and Fish Refuge because okay. they wanted a rail loop to Elma, the power plant. Oh. And so that was what happened. And so the refuge here got considerably bigger after that swap was made. And do you think that was a good swap? I mean, was it a good trade-off? I mean, this it made this much area, or this area, a lot bigger. It did, yeah. I guess it happened, and I can't say one way or another. I'm sure it had, you know, bad points and, and, and good, good points. points yeah. <laughs> But now, now uh, there's like 6,200 acres plus down here, 
And it said 16% of it is just bottomland and, and woods. Okay. And 50% is marsh or backwater, you know, however you want to label it. And then the remainder of it, and that's not too much, there are, you know, remnant oak savanna. Oh, okay. And that's only like 0.02%, and they'd like to have more. And then grasslands, you know, where they've tried to do some, some prairie, dry prairie. Okay, okay. And what happened too, Mary, was in 1965, there was a major flood of the Mississippi. And I, I can remember that as a kid. It was a big one. 65? In 1965. And it really tore up a lot of things, uh, especially there had been some dikes built out there from where the, uh, the Delta Fish and Fur Farm had been. And it just really changed the, the lay of the land and, you know, some of the ecology. So uh, that was a, that was a big big influence on this refuge. So um, we're just lucky that that the initial scheme to drain <laughs> all this wetland and divert the Tremplo River, uh, we're very happy that was a failure. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it definitely would have changed this down here, wouldn't it? Of it would, and I believe this this portion that we're going through now I think at one time this land had been farmed okay well I suppose it's a little bit higher we did come up kind of a little bit of a hill yeah. here and this to me looks like prairie I see some prairie grasses and I see some young oaks and maybe this is a one of those oak savanna type restorations you know and those are you know the only thing that's missing is uh, big undulates <coughs> Oh, bless you. Ungulants? You uh, mean ungulates. You mean like... Ungulates, excuse buffalo me. Buffalo and, and... Buffalo. Large animals that chew. Elk. Yes. Elk, buffalo. I bet you there's whitetails down here though, huh? I'm sure. Well, whitetails seem to be everywhere. Yep. I'm sure. But this is a refuge, so a lot of the animals that are uh, taking refuge here, I guess you could say, would be like waterfowl and reptiles you know things like turtles and whatever turtle turtle yep turtle turtle okay now we're we are just tearing down the road here it looks to me that like they're trying to get rid of some of this uh, black locust that is pretty invasive black locust is a you know it's one of those they're learning more and more about some of these shrubby kind of species yeah these early Secessional species, they're colonies, Nancy. They're colonies. Oh, they're they're with their roots interlocking and everything. Yeah, right? it's yeah. like one, one. You know, the quaking aspen. Yeah, they're one tree, but there's valleys full of them. But it's all one organism. Isn't that crazy? Now, Mary, if you look over here to your right, you see that little house type thing over there with the green roof. Okay. You're going to have to stop in a spot. Here, I got to get... Oh, people went pie me there. They didn't throw anything at us, so I guess we're okay. Can you see it there? Well, you got to give me a second. Stop. Well, I'm trying to get where I'm not in front of a tree. Just let me move up here a little. Okay. How's that? Okay, better. Okay, now we got to zoom in on it. We shouldn't have our viewing audience listen to us bicker. <laughs> Stop, go, stop, go. <laughs> well, it's go. part of the process, folks. It's all part of the process. Okay, we have a little hut. Yes, well, it's actually up on legs, and what it is is a, a bat house, a big bat house. And I think it was built as a project by, I think it was, um, it was either a scouting group or, or some kind of a group like that. And it is where the bats hang out. And at least once a year, there are people that come down here and sit near that bat house. And then uh, in the evening, when the bats come out you know, start flying around, they sit there and they count them. So they're trying oh, wow. to get an idea about bat population. Well, bat population's been struggling lately. Nancy. Well, they've certainly taken some hits. Yeah, they have. Yep. 
and that's it's all part of the whole connected deal. It's like the trees and the bats and the birds, birds and the butterflies, and the bees. Yes, they are the insects. Okay. okay. No, that's not a very good one. Uh, what I'm looking for is a very, very pretty. Um, maybe right up here. What is it? What are you looking for, Mary? Milkweed. Oh, milkweed. Okay. Okay, right in here, maybe? Yeah, right in here. Perfect. 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 Now, I don't want Mary to just run off into the field because then I can't find her. So, promise you stick around, Mary. And they've certainly revised their uh, thinking on milkweed. That for such a long time, they were saying that it was a terrible plant and it should be eradicated. And it's interesting, I read that during World War II, they actually had kids going out and collecting the milkweed pods and they were using it in, uh, boy, I think it was parachute production. But it was not a plant that had a lot of... Uh, fans and now and we've found out that the milkweed is really important to butterflies especially the monarchs and that's the plant that monarchs lay their eggs on and uh, if you want to have monarchs and other birds and bees and pollinators then you do need to leave some of these milkweed and they really are quite pretty when they bloom. They have a, a pretty bloom and you can smell it. Wave at the camera. There's Nancy. Yeah, Mary. Didn't lose her this time. Ooh. I was kind of nervous there. I couldn't find my way back. Well, you put that seatbelt on there. It's going to oh. go ding, 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 yeah, ding. i got to have the navigator. Know. You know, isn't that amazing? How long ago was it that the... Uh, Made it mandatory everybody wear a seatbelt, right. Nancy. That's right. People still don't do it and they end up uh, dead. Yeah. I mean, how hard is that to put on a seatbelt? I mean, really. And they even built in things into our vehicles that make us put them on. Make us put them on. Now, this is interesting. That Right there it says, I don't know how they pronounce it, Keps Island or Keeps Island. That was actually named after a gentleman that did a lot of uh, trapping and clamming down in this area. He would get those freshwater Mississippi clams, which I don't know anybody that eats them. I think they use them for bait, if anything. Oh. <laughs> but he, he did a lot of clamming and he found a big pearl at one time. Oh, yeah. wow. And so I, that's... I'm sure they ate them. Nancy. What, the pearls? No, not the pearls. <laughs> pearls are for jewelry. I'm pretty sure that they ate because I remember eating all kinds of things out of the river. Clam but the Mississippi clams aren't noted for being good to eat. Well, but when you're hungry and oh, you don't have a no. quick mart. Oh, I suppose. You know? I suppose. And you know we're going to give a shout out to the folks who maintain this property yes. so yay u.s fish and wildlife yep. folks yep that's uh, we, a lot of work and they do a wonderful job and you know managing a habitat can be pretty challenging so you know go uh go u.s fish and wildlife go yep. you do a good job yep, it is and we have even a learning center down here which yeah. is really really cool yep i've been to a couple of uh meetings that they've had there where they did talks on, you know, prairie and, and stuff. It was a lovely, lovely place to have a meeting. So now we are going to go and we are going to the observation deck. Oh, so that can, sounds official. Yep, we are going to look at some wildlife, hopefully. Like I was going to say, what are we going to observe? Well, I'm thinking like duck. So Mary and I, we're all cameraed up here. Let's go see what they've got here. I hear ducks, Mary. Do you? 
What are you taking a picture of that Kleenex no, I'm for? I'm taking a picture of your shadow. <laughs> okay. A shadow shot, Nancy. All right. <laughs> trying to squelch my creative design work. Are you talking to yourself again? I am. <laughs> All right. Hi there, how are you? Oh, we're good this morning. Such a beautiful day. Isn't it? Now, Have. That's a fun little way. So it takes pictures as well? It's a GoPro. It's like a little. Oh, it's just. Oh, okay. It's a, it's it's a, a little a, micro video camera. Video camera. Yeah, it's yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Only it's small, mm -hmm. but it does okay. take really I've good just pictures. Seen it on people's helmets when they're. Oh, yeah, there's all different ways that you can, can rig it, you know. Yep, yep. So what do you see out there, Mary? Well, I'll tell you, only because the gentleman over there can identify a lot more than I Yeah. Do. So we have swans and pelicans. We have mallards, gadwell, pintails, harrier, eagle, egret. Okay, I got a few of these. Ring-billed gulls and northern shovelers. Oh. Northern what? Shovelers. 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 Hi, how are you? And what's a northern shoveler? Well, I actually looked at these books and it didn't really tell me too much. It's just oh, okay. There's a picture right there. Oh, all right. You got a big bill. Yep. Oh, a <laughs> northern a shoveler. Bit. Okay. Except for, yeah. Huh. Two types of ducks you will find poking right, around. Kind of green and cinnamon and white, but they, they have a black head now, you said, because yeah, it's not, not green, breeding yeah. season. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. We're getting our scope so we can... Oh, can't really see. yeah. Where are you from? Here. Well, I see ducks right out here. There's a lot of ducks. And that... Um, thanks to him, I, I have more specific names for them rather than my generic ducks. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> Search us on Google, WTCO Community TV, Trimpolo, yeah. and we pop right up. There we are. History <laughs> Files. There we are. <laughs> this is a History Files episode. It is. Let's go see what else they've got up here. Well, this is nice. If you ride your bicycle down here, they even have places for you to park your bicycle. Look at that. Yeah. These are informational panels. Yep, and here's this is one of my favorite things about saving the snags because there are a lot of birds and critters that that like those dead snags and the trees with the dead branches. They have their place. Okay, let's walk out on the Pine Creek Dyke and see what we see out here. I don't want to lose Mary here in the in the woods. She might be trying to get one of those special shots and the next thing you know she's walking into a <laughs> a bog or something. If I disappear, yeah. I have the last scene with Nancy. Oh yeah. It's my responsibility. Yeah, 
yeah, this is a nice trail. Like you say, it's shady so that even if it wasn't such a nice day, even if it was a hot day, you could come down here and really have a nice hike. And it's flat, you're not going to have to go up a bunch of hills. Oh, I know they're talking about poison ivy. Friend or foe? You know, I'm seeing a lot of robins down here, Mary. I'm not a big bird expert, but I do, um, I do recognize robins. Here's one of those snags that they're talking about. You know, sometimes just, just leave the dead branches, leave the dead trees, because various birds and, and other critters and bugs, they use them. They're a home too. Yeah, they're, it's important. When I visited my son in Germany, and, and Germany has some beautiful forests, and they have beautiful trike, uh, you know, hiking trails. People get out there and, and really uh, use it. But their woods were always so clean. I mean, they had little piles of branches where it looked like people had gone around and picked up any you know, branches that had fallen off a tree and put them in nice, neat little piles, which um, I thought, well, that's, that's really neat. It's nice to have people that like things really perfectly clean tidy. and tidy, but you do need that. You do need to have some of that snag wood out there as well. And nature, Nancy, messy yeah. is good. It is, messy is good, you're right. And I'm not trying to pick on the Germans, but that was just a, it was just a observation I made that their woods were really tidy. I wonder if these robins down here are the ones that have decided they can tough it out in Wisconsin winters. Well, it seems like we're seeing more and more that they are no longer <laughs> the harbinger of spring because sometimes you see them in December and January. Okay, let's go to the left here, the Pine Creek Dyke and see what we see out here. And back in here, these are walking trails. So. Mm -hmm. They've got loops and these trails are pretty easy. You don't have to worry about getting lost, I don't think. Boy, you know, there's still so many leaves on the trees. It gets kind of chilly when you're walking in the shade. Well, Mary, maybe you need to run around a little more and work up some heat. <laughs> it's okay, we're gonna be back in the sun here in just a minute anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I guess you just did not dress appropriately. No, I have an extra shirt in the car. I come prepared. Just I should have grabbed it before we left. Like I say, why don't you run down the trail and back a couple times and see <laughs> if that doesn't warm you up. <laughs> I'm hard on you, Mary. I'm sorry. Well, and look at, we've got some, uh, oh, we got a beautiful snag here, don't we? Yeah, and we got a few warm seasons. Although this one looks like it maybe lost its leaves early, but it's on its way out. The tree. It, yeah, it doesn't yeah. look very healthy. All right, now here's, Mary, you don't, pay attention, don't walk off to the left or the right, because you are probably going to land in the green slime. Gotta be quiet. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting how in the history of people doing development and and farming and and de <laughs> thinking about 
if you if you take away all the wetlands and the swamps what do you do when you get a lot of rain? What do you do when you have flooding? Where is that water going to go? You know, well, we're learning that it's backing up. You've got to take that into consideration, folks, so you're going to have a mess sooner or later. Well, I think we're the laters already here, unfortunately. Well, I remember a time where, you know, Lane Drive and the cross kind of goes out from the, uh, the north side of the cross to over kind of by where the university is. And there's a lot of swamp there. And I remember in, the, I think, in the late 60s and 70s, they were really seriously talking about draining that or filling it in so they could develop it. I and wonder uh, how many loads of fill it would take. Well, fortunately, millions they didn't do it. <laughs> That's yeah. probably why. It was not a good plan. And I suppose, I, I suppose that uh, we're not going to see any turtles. It's probably too chilly. Yeah, I'm wondering. They're probably getting all nestled in. You think they're getting ready for the winter? Now this would be, I would think this would be a perfect log for turtles to uh, sun themselves on and I don't see any today so it's making me think that it's too cool. Maybe later in the day but not now. Yep. Mary, I've got a friend out in Massachusetts, and he's only about 10 minutes away from the ocean. And uh, I said, you know, I'm probably, we're here where we are, we're probably about as far away from the ocean <laughs> as you can get in the United States. But I sent him a couple of pictures of the Mississippi. And he was just blown away. He had no idea what a big river it was, you know. You know, I don't think there's anything in, in Massachusetts that's anything like the Mississippi. It is a big river, because we're looking out right now, and this is not the main channel. The main channel is over there, I think, behind the trees. These are just the backwaters, more or less. Huge. How's it going?
ducks aren't cooperating for me. The ducks aren't cooperating? No, I can't zoom in enough to get them. Oh, rotten ducks anyway, huh? So if you see little white dots, <laughs> those are swans. Oh yeah, the tundra right? swans, yeah. And then there's, if you see little black dots moving, because <laughs> I, I turned this mic on. If you see little black dots moving around, those are ducks. Well, it looks like some ducks out there having a good time. We got some ducks action going on here. Morning. Morning. Can we take a picture of the dog? Okay. Oh, yeah. Very social. Even <laughs> I get to go for a walk in the park. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the reserve. <laughs> Because I'm such a good puppy. Yeah. Yes, there we go. What a beautiful day for a walk. Thank you. You just never know who you're going to see when you're at the refuge. No. Some wild critters, some tame critters. He was very happy to get to go for a walk. Yeah, well, I can imagine all the wonderful smells out here. Oh, yeah. Some kind of a big white wading bird. Here we got some critters. And they're just standing there, and I'm out. You know, they could help us out by moving around. Well, I imagine they're looking for something to eat, and the idea is to stand still, right? Not tromp around. Um, yeah, it's a big bird, whatever it is, huh? Is it a pelican? I think so. You can hear all kinds of things here. You can hear geese and ducks and... It's fairly noisy down here today. A lot of activity out there on the water. I bet. Teaming with critters that are going to make a long trek someplace warmer. Yeah, they're not going to stick around too much longer, probably. If we look over here, Mary, we can see something that is getting to be pretty rare. If you look off to the west here, the side of that bluff, I believe that's Goat Prairie, isn't it? Yes, it is. Which, well, I can remember when these bluffs didn't have hardly any trees on them. And now the trees are coming in, but there are still remnants of uh, what they call Goat Prairie. And it's Usually they're facing south and it's a grassy space where there aren't trees 
and they were home to all kinds of different uh, birds and bugs and bees and interesting grasses and species, but it's becoming very rare now. Yeah, those are maintained most by fire. Right, so when you took fire out of the uh, equation, out of the equation of the ecosystem, then it changed. A lot of things changed. Now that pole over there to my right, Mary, I, first I was just thinking offhanded that, oh, it's probably a utility pole, but I think they've actually put it there as a, a nesting platform, possibly for eagles. Or something, huh? Yeah, and I just heard an eagle. You know, they have a chicky, chirk, 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 chirk kind of a call. Well, I'm sure they're getting ready for winter as well. Yeah? Well, they've proven to be pretty hardy. Yeah, they are. Oh, nice landing, huh? Did you see that? <laughs> We can hear it and we can see the train. Okay, well, I think we'll start back along the dike here. This is a nice leisure walk. This is a beautiful walk. I was down Look here. Look at this. Now I got the sleeves rolled up. <laughs> you were just complaining about being I cold. That. I'm sweating. <laughs> it's amazing that October sun sure does generate up a lot of heat. Yeah, like I said, you were just complaining about being cold. Oh, give me a, another 500 yards or so and I'll be finding <laughs> <them> again. <laughs> and over here to our right, sitting out there in the middle of the water, is our beautiful Trempolo Mountain. The mountain's sinking. That, uh, is it sinking? It's not, I don't think it's sinking. It's sitting. It's sitting. Sitting, soaking in the river. Something about, that's the way Trempolo is, is uh, literally translated from French. Okay. But it's unique, and it was one of those landmarks for uh, trappers and early travelers and Native Americans. When they saw Trempolo Mountain, it was one of those things that pretty much told them where they were in relation to other places. On the big river. On the big river. Because in the day, the big river was not this wide, open, lock and dammed. Um, controlled. Controlled. Right. Water, water system. It was meandering. It was full of trees and stumps and goodies. Yeah. It did have, you know, main channels, um, but the river today is drastically different. Well, it's controlled, it's regulated. In all kinds of ways. Yes, because they said, you know, the rivers would change its course and it could get real low at times, and other times it would be flooding, but since the 1930s, when they started putting in the series of lock and dams, it's, it's been more tightly regulated. So as we're out here in our beautiful refuge, we should just be so thankful that 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 whole plan to drain this and farm it and develop it, but that never really worked out. Well, wouldn't that have been a terrible loss? Well, and considering the amount of water, that would have been an insurmountable task, and that's why they didn't do it. Right, and that was back in the early 1900s before the river even got, you know, a little more regulated than it is now. Well, it's beautiful, you know, you want to take it all. And even as beautiful as it is as it's on film, 
it's it's you really need to come out here in person if you can and really enjoy it you know, I've got to take some shots when I can get them open. I suppose my production specialist will hit me when no one's looking our production crew, yes, we're being followed along by a crew of seven or eight people holding various microphones and little generators and... Yeah, I'm amazed that nobody hears the hum. Yeah. And lighting crews to make sure we get the right lighting. And then, we, of course, we have our makeup crew that darts in every couple minutes to make sure that we're at our best. They have their own band. Yes. <laughs> we don't. Uh, because, you know, it's not easy to put together these quality productions. My goodness. And a duck is laughing at us. And a duck is laughing at us, yeah. Oh, That's what it sounds like. like. A trail down for somebody to come down to this little water pocket get a drink right I guess lay around trail. see I spy things like that Nancy deer trail or muskrat trail or all kinds of critters live out here and there was a picture on Facebook that uh, a friend of mine took just yesterday and they were out on their kayaks and they had a picture of a beaver down here. Oh, okay. And beavers are, they are the most amazing engineers. The way they build their dams and their, their well, what do you call it, beaver lodge. It's amazing. You can't imagine a rodent would be able to do that the way they do. But Well, they have chainsaws for teeth, Nancy. Yeah, I guess they do. It is amazing. You know, they were just about wiped out because well, their they, were, are beautiful. they were considered fashionable. People made them into hats. Coats, mittens, yeah, probably and then, shoes. And then as things got... I mean, you know, I bet you the natives trapped trap beaver. Oh, they probably did. Because that would make a perfect size pelt to wrap sure. your feet in. But back before the, the white settlers came to this country, they talked about, and beavers still do, how they make their, their dams. And when they back up the water, that creates, some places it creates like what they call a water meadow. Yeah. And that was very important to wildlife. It gave them a place to drink. And it was a, uh, you know, a source for water birds and bugs and things to live. Well, and then they controlled, they controlled the tree species. Yeah. They ate right. them. Well, and I don't they ate them. them. They cut them down. <laughs> well, they cut them down, but they have to perpetually keep chewing or their teeth grow. Right. And right. so they were like <laughs> America's first lumberjacks. Yes. You know. You bet. Managing the managing the trees that were, and most of the times those dams they needed, you know, they needed to float the bigger trees. The little ones they could drag. Yeah. The big ones they had to uh, work a little harder with and having a lot of water plus protection. And the lodges never have only one entrance. Oh, well, that's right. Like I say, they plan ahead, apparently. They're good engineers. They're good builders. And then when they're done harvesting the trees, they move to another spot. They said what actually causes a beaver to want to make a dam is the sound of running water. Does it hurt their ears? It's a good thing my dog isn't along because she'd oh, probably be. Oh, Zip would be in green. She'd be in the green slime. Then. Oh, yeah. Now, aren't you glad we came out and did this today? I am. And that you didn't go right down to the, 
to the basement to start stacking wood. Well, tis that time of the year too. And you know, you wait for an excuse, like a rain day. And when, yeah, we haven't had very many, have we? Well, it's been pretty few and far between. I know. And when we don't have rain days, we think we'd go. It's okay. That's this fine. way. Yeah. See, we're already lost. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. With our superior navigational skills, so Nancy you... Bergman leaves us safely from the jungles of the refuge. So you think dun, if dun, we dun, really dun. did get lost down here, do you think they'd send out someone looking for us? Um. Or they just called us the uh, the Nancy and Mary Memorial Trail. <laughs> so, if you get an opportunity, while the weather's still nice, hopefully, hop in your car, take a drive down to the uh, Trumplo Wildlife Refuge. By all the means. It's beautiful. And like I say, it doesn't cost anything. Boy. What a deal. And the ducks will be doing their thing for quite a while. Yep. And you can see the, the geese and the tundra swans and the leader birds, the pelicans. The paddle ducks. The whole package. They've got viewing things out there. Bring your binocs. And enjoy the day. And we enjoy doing this on the history, history file. Thanks for coming along, folks. Common yellow throat. Richardy, 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 you say. Okay, now it's the chickadees. Oh, no chickadees, right? And now the northern cardinal. Come right here, 